this is a very generic representation of a problem known as method of initial rates. And one of the easiest ways to identify a problem like this is simply to look at the data that's given. And you'll notice that in this case, there are three different runs of the same reaction that are carried out where the concentrations of the reactants are varied and the initial rate of the reaction is measured in each case. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the data for each of these reactions and determine what the rate law for this reaction looks like. The way we can start though is simply by writing a generic form of the rate law. And that looks something like this. The rate of reaction is equal to our rate constant times the concentration of A raised to some power. In this case I'm just going to call it M times the concentration of B raised to some other power, N. These M and N numbers are often referred to as orders of reaction. So we can say that M represents the order of reaction with respect to A, N rep represents the order of reaction with respect to B. Now what we need to do is we need to determine these values. And to do this, we're going to go back over and look at our data. If I look at the first two runs, I notice that the concentration of B does not change, but the concentration of A does. And so what I'm going to do is, in order to determine the order of reaction with respect to A, or the number M as I've labeled it, I'm going to compare those two runs. And the easiest way to do this is to divide out the rate law expressions for each of these two reactions. So I'm going to start by taking reaction 2, where the rate of reaction is 7.3 times 10 to the negative fourth molar per second. And that's equal to our rate constant, which we don't know yet, times the concentration of A, which is 0 0.0200 molar, raised to the m power times the concentration of B, which is 0 0.0300 molar, raised to the n power. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this side of the equation by the rate of reaction for reaction 1. So in this case that's 3.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molar per second. And I'm going to divide this side of the reaction by the full expression over here, which again is K times 0 0.0100 molar raised to the M power and 0 0.0300 molar raised to the N power. Now what you can see is if you look on the right hand side of this equation there are two things that can cancel out. The first thing that can cancel out is our rate constant got that on both the, in both the numerator and denominator. Also, this expression 0 0.300 molar raised to the n power can cancel because it's both in the numerator and the denominator. So what I'm left with now is simply a ratio of the two rates equaling the ratio of the molarities of reactant A for these two runs, both raised to the m power. So if I divide the left-hand side of this equation and I round it off to the appropriate number of significant figures, I get 2.0. If I look at the right-hand side of the equation and divide it out to the appropriate number of significant figures, I get 2.00 raised to the m power. That means that m is equal to 1, or the reaction is first order in reactant A. Another way of looking at this, which can be really useful and also save some time, is simply to say this. If we compare the rates for the, or if we compare the concentrations for the first two reactions, we see that we've doubled the concentration of reactant A between, or from reaction one to reaction two. If we compare the rates, we see that we've also doubled the rate. So doubling the concentration results in doubling the rate. That means first order. Now, Let's do this with, the, with respect to B and not have to write all this out. If we look at reactions 1 and 3,
what I can see is in reaction 3, I start with a concentration of B that's 0 0.0100 molar. And in reaction 1, I start with a concentration of B that's 0 0.0300 molar. So what I'm doing is I'm tripling the concentration of B, and I'm also holding the concentration of A constant. So what I could do is I could mark that out just for reference sake. Okay, I don't have to deal with that. So essentially what I'm doing to, from going, and going from reaction 3 to reaction 1 is I'm tripling the concentration of B only. I'm not changing the concentration of A. What does that do to the rate? If I divide 3.7 times 10 to the negative fourth by 4.1 times 10 to the negative fifth, I get a quotient that rounds to 9.0. So what happens here is that tripling the concentration of B raises the reaction rate by a factor of 9. What would we conclude by that? If we look back up to here, what we would get then is, is simply saying that 9.0 is equal to 3 raised to the n power. And that means that n is 2. So the reaction is second order with respect to B. So, we have a reaction that's first order with respect to A and second order with respect to B. And you can see this by the way the rates have changed as we, we alter the concentrations. Now there's one last thing that we need to do and that is to determine the rate constant for this reaction. So let's get a clean screen up here and do that. One of the things that you want to pay really close attention to when you determine the rate constant is that a rate constant must have units. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a reaction. And we'll just pick the first reaction. In reaction 1, we know that the rate of the reaction is 3.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molar per second. That's equal to the, our rate constant, which is our unknown, times 0 0.0100 molar to the first power, and that's times 0 0.0300 molar squared. So what we can do is we can go ahead and, and go through all this, and for what I'm just going to do is condense this down. And this is something you probably want to do on your own to make sure you can follow along. 3.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molar per second is equal to our rate constant times 9.00 times 10 to the negative sixth molar to the third power. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by this. The three point, so I'm going to take 3.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molar per second. I'm going to divide it by 9.00 times 10 to the negative sixth molar to the third power. If I do that, I get 4.1 times 10 to the 1, or 41, molar to the negative 2 seconds to the negative 1. That's the value for my rate constant. So once again, what we've concluded from this reaction is, first of all, the reaction is first order with respect to A. The reaction is second order with respect to B. The overall order of the reaction is third order, because we add, if we add the two orders together, that's what we get. And that's also reflected in the units of our rate constant. Okay, this re reflects that what we've got is a third order overall reaction. And that's important to remember sometimes. 
So once again, this just covers the basic format for solving problems like this. You'll see problems like this both in lab and in lecture, and it's worth practicing.